Hello, welcome to Survival ABCs. This is going to be a how-to video on how to use a foul rod. And I think this thing here might be in the way. Let's get that fixed. There we go. So, this foul rod is from North 49. The striking piece is actually from Light My Fire. So, uh, they don't come together. This ferro rod actually comes with a piece that looks so similar to a hacksaw blade almost. And this one has its own uh, little ferro rod to go with it as well. This one has a little built-in whistle. Works out decently well. Anyways, uh, these are these are vital in my opinion anyway. A lot of people have them, a lot of people I know have them, a lot of people I don't know have them. They're very useful, they're very vital to have. Basically just make sparks, ignite your dry tinder, and therefore you got your fire. Now, there are still in fact a lot of people out there who don't really know how to use this, and I don't blame them. You know, people, some people don't really understand how to use matches either, but uh, it's understandable, it's okay, you know, we're here to learn, right? So, uh, this piece here has its, uh, you know, a little indentation for your thumb there, so it's obvious which way you're going to hold this, but uh, I strike it on this uh, edge here. You can do it on all three edges. Um, I'm right-handed, so the striking piece will be in my right hand. The fell rod will be in my, my off hand. So how you want to do it is basically is that uh, some people have different methods of doing it. Some people hold the striking piece on it like that and scrape it across. Some people do it 90. I personally do it roughly on a 45 degree angle. You want to press decently, semi-decently hard. It's one of those things you got to really play around with on your own just to figure out what works best for you. Some people will actually do it in a fashion like this. That's for the stuff, when it comes to a tinder that's really difficult to ignite, that's a good method of doing it. Some people also, if they're really struggling on it, they'll actually scrape it like that. And what this does is it scrapes off some of the ferrocerium dust, puts it into your tinder bundle, so that way when you strike it, it ignites that little bit of dust, and therefore your tinder will go up nice and fine. But if you prepare it nicely enough, you shouldn't even have to do that. These are worth about a uh, thousand or so strikes, or even more, depending on how you, how hard you press. The harder you press, the more material you dig out of it, and therefore the less amount of strikes you're going to get in the future. So, I'm pretty sure I got uh, some little bit of tinders. You know, there's a variety of different tinders that you can use. Sorry, I just got to reach into my backpack here. This one here is called the Wet Fire Tinder. It's very good uh, stuff. You, you know, if you get these for a package of, I think, about uh, roughly 10 to 12 of these, and you get uh, they're roughly for about 10 bucks, give or take, depending on where you go. I'm just going to ignite this just for the sake of this video. Otherwise, I would definitely put uh, some better Tinder on there. So it comes like this, and basically, with my Faro. I'll actually just scrape a little bit off into a little pile. So hopefully you can see this. Here, I'm going to tilt the camera down. So hopefully you'll see this better. I'm just sitting on a log. It's really wet, so don't uh, get too worried about it. I'm going to move the camera so that way you can see it a little bit better. So here's the block that I started with. I just scraped off a little bit using the striking piece. I got a bit of a runny nose today, sorry about this. Anyways, uh, so I'm going to try to ignite this little bit here. Sorry, just going to realign the set the camera. Oh, there we go. Okay, so this is the little bundle right here that I'm trying to ignite. This is the original one. I'm not going to be starting any real fire out here today, I promise. Now, there's some different ways of doing it. Some people actually put the fell right, right down into it. That way you can strike right into it. Some people will hold it up a little bit and strike down. And other people will actually hold this steady and they'll move their hand backwards like that. Because there are times where you're striking it down like this and you can actually hit the tinder bundle and 
all over the place. Sometimes the wind might even blow it away. So when it comes to wind, it's a good idea to put the frail right, right down on a, onto it. That way, if it's like actual dry tinder like birch bark, for example, someone you can actually hold the thing down while you're striking it. So this particular fashion, I'm just going to hold like that just so we get up close. Done. So now this is a wet fire tinder. So this stuff catches really, really easy. You know, if I were to stick this whole block right into it there, which I'm not going to, it'll make a much bigger flame, and therefore you can use this to collect uh, more tinder, put it on top, and therefore get a bigger fire flame going. So, here, let's try this one more time here. Just, again, I'm just going to shave this off just a little bit, get a little bundle going. So I got a little bit right in there. So that time I did it, as I hold it right up close and then scrape down, I'll show you this method here. I'm going to hold this steady and this is going to be what's moving. It's right down a little groove here. So. This method, it's a little trickier because of the fact that you have it up here and the sparks are being brought up over here and they got dropped down, so it might take a little while sometimes. Like I said, doing it this way is better, but uh, also you can do it this, in this fashion here. You can't really see it too well, but there is a little bit of par dust particles from this, and therefore it drops right into it and therefore ignites it. So. Oh, there it goes. Now again, this is very, very wet. And it snowed last night a little bit too, so I'm not overly concerned of this burning here, but uh, just want to give you guys a rundown how it works out. So for all of those strikes, I'm actually holding this at a roughly a 45 degree angle and doing it down. That's the way I do it. That's the way a lot of people I know do it. So how you want to do it, again, is up to you as your personal preferences. Sorry, I just heard somebody in the distance. There's a lot of pathways, a lot of rough pathways around me that uh, haven't even really spotted yet. <sighs> Excuse me. Just getting over a little bit of a sickness, so I'm just feeling all sorts of heat right now, on and off. So, let's shave a list a little bit more for this one here. Birch bark or any other tinders that uh, are commonly used, you gotta do a little more preparation than this. This is just, you know, the plain and simple right here. So this one, I'm gonna scrape some of that dust off into this. For this, you wanna press lightly, but you don't wanna be hitting it so hard at the same time. This is a nice little beginner's trick, is what this is. So there's a little bit of dust on there. I know you guys can't see it, but uh, it's there, I promise. And, uh, <clears throat> so I'll just do that real quick. Oh, this one I'm going to hold it up here and strike down, so. Up here it's, you know, it's difficult, even though I'm so close to it, but it's still very difficult to get the sparks right in there, so a lot of times it's best to hold it right in there. See? It's just that much simpler, so much more easier to do that way. So. This frail rod is one of the bigger ones. It's uh, probably, I think it's about two and a half, three inches long, and roughly in the general range of, I think, five sixteenths thick. Uh, I don't like the small quarter, quarter inch uh, diameter ones. I don't like those because you can use those up very quickly and very easily, especially the ones that are only like two inches in length. If you get the one from North 49, I suggest you go for one of these because it's a lot bigger, especially if you're a beginner with this, you don't know what you're doing you can definitely use this a lot better. So, it'll come with like a little hacksaw blade type of thing instead of this. This is from the uh, Light My Fire uh, ones, one of those small ones that I was just was talking about. Sometimes you get a little bit of dirt, just wipe it off after you're done using it, and then you're good to go. 
it'll have this blackish kind of paint to it on it. You just gotta scrape it off. It's just like a protection for this thing, that's all. So anyways, this is uh, how to use ferret rods. See you around.